Hi everyone, it's Denise with One of Our Crafts. I am making bias tape today. <laughs> um, essentially, I need to make them for the masks because I've run out of elastic. And um, if any of you have tried to purchase it, you probably know it's, well, I don't know about your area, but here it's non-existent. It's like extinct. <laughs> so the masks that I'm making now now have ties. Um, so, you know, they tie around your neck and then around your head. So to do that, I have to make bias tape. I can purchase bias tape. It is also running very low in the stores. And as you guys may or may not already know, Hobby Lobby has closed and put their employees on furlough. Um, so uh, essentially we're down to Walmart for anything and the shelves are just about bare. You've got very ugly neutral colors that you know um don't really match with anything i have so i have to make my own bias tape um some of you probably already know how to make it some of you use the little bias tape maker which um also walmart is out of uh so can't find those and i went online to look for one and they said it could be end of June before I get it. So I'm like, no, I'm going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. However, I do remember a trick that my mother had showed me to make it a little quicker than having to, like, fold it and then fold it again and crease it and iron it and crease it and iron it and do all that. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, and I just wanted to get on and say, hey, and how you guys doing? And, and um, thank you guys for all your support. So as you can see... <laughs> I've been busy making bias tape. So, and the great thing about bias, you're like, well, I'm a junk drawer. I don't really do that. Um, you can make this and give it as, you know, wrap it on a little piece of cardboard and, and give it as a happy mail. Um, I have a, I've been making it and then it kind of got my uh, inspiration back. Thank goodness. But what I make is the double fold style you can make the single fold which essentially is this portion and then it lays like that i like the double fold um for the project you know for making the mask so i've been making double fold and that's what i'm going to show you guys how to do um as a quilter we used to make this you know you make like a single fold um or a just a a piece that you fold in half and then you can make your own bias kind of like uh to um bind your quilts so but um like i said i it inspired me uh, there's something that i want to do so i'm going to make some up and show you guys how to do it but um i'm going to use bias tape on that journal i'm making for my crafty cat design team project on the spine and i'm going to do something really cute with it so i don't want to give it away but <laughs> um you know, so if you guys want to try to do it, so then that way, if you don't have bias tape or you can't find it, you'll know how to make it. So anyways, let's get started. Um, what you're going to need, you're, you're going to at least need a square of, depending on how long, how much bias you tape you want to make. If you have a fat quarter, you can make about four, anywhere from four and a half, four and a quarter to four and a half yards of bias tape just a fat quarter and essentially what biased is is if you look at fabric right you have your salvage edge which is the edge that they finish up off and you have two you know when you when you get a yard of fabric or half a yard of fabric right it's typically um a half a yard is 18 inches and then it's the the width of your fabric and it the width of the fabric typically is anywhere between I've seen it as little as 40, as much as um, uh, 44 to 46. It just depends on the style of fabric that you get. Normally, cotton is about 40, about 44 inches. So when you cut it in half, right? You have your sal You'll have two salvage ends, right? And you cut it in half, then you have 22 inches approximately this one's 23 by 18 because half a yard is 18 inches so uh, roughly now you can buy pre-made 
uh, pre-done fabric packs and stuff, uh, fat quarters already that are already cut for you, um, which is great. Um, but you don't have to use a fat quarter. Let's say you only have uh, 15 inches by 22. That's okay too, because all you're gonna, I'm gonna show you what you can do. All right, you just won't have as much. You're not gonna, you won't be able to make four and a half, uh, four and a half yards of it. It'll just be a smaller length. So what I do is I put my salvage edge to my left. Some people like it on the right. Some people like to use the salvage edge as part of their binding. I don't. I keep my salvage edges because I do other projects with them. So what I do is I take it up and you can pull it down from either way and make a triangle. Okay. And hopefully you guys can see this. I know you can't see my full mat on this camera. Um, but what I'll do is, what I do is I take it to the point and then I just finger press it. All right. So that you have a triangle here or an angle. And then, I'll grab my scissors. I cut my salvage. Some people, um, they cut their diagonal first before they cut it. I don't like to do that. I just cut my, this salvage edge piece off here and keep it for another project who's in my scrap bin now I have a nice triangle so now what I want to do is you know fabric let me take it here and show you you know going from your salvage edge your salvage edge here if you pull you don't have much tug if you pull it this way you don't but if you pull it in a diagonal pattern, which is against, you know, it's the bias against the the, um, the grain there or the knit, the way that they uh, wove the fabric, you get more pull. And that's what helps with your bias tape so that, you know, like if you're making an outfit and you put it around your collar or around corners or whatever, it gives that extra pull. That's why it's called bias tape. Okay. So now I'm going to cut my bias against, uh, cut it against the, you know, the, the grain, or I keep saying grain <laughs> against the threads, you know, so I'm going to cut my bias angle here. So I'm just going to cut it right at the fold. It doesn't need to be perfect. What I normally do is put my hand down and then I put my, when I put my scissors in, I just kind of pull outward a little bit, not a lot, just a little tug and it keeps it taut so that you can cut your fabric. All right, hopefully you guys seen that and didn't see a big old arm in the way. <laughs> so just cut your, cut along your edge there. And then what I do is, as I just pull it down to make another triangle, and try and get your ends to kind of meet up here. Sorry, I'm standing to do this. I normally sit to craft, but I'm standing today, so. All right, so now I've, I've pulled this down, right? That's my bias cut, my biased edge. And then I have a folded edge. I'm going to put that folded edge down at the bottom. Okay. Now you're going to need a rotary cutter and a ruler. Now you can use your grid and mark two inches and cut like that. Personally, I don't like to do it that way. My, my cuts are never even when I do it that way. I don't know why. They just are. They never come out even. So... I have um, a ruler with the rotary cutter on it. You don't need this to um, to do this. Just make sure you mark your ruler to two inches and put your ruler on the other side of your where you're cutting. You see what I'm saying? Don't cut from this edge out. Cut from this edge going in. So I'm going to put it, lay it on my two inch mark here. See, here's my two inch. I'm going to lay that line right on that edge, that biased edge. And I can just push down and cut. And now my I know my pieces are two inches. So then I'm going to lay that two inch line right on that cut. If you can't see it, just pull it a little bit. And then get it right on that cut edge. Let's see, I can find it. I pulled it away a little bit and then okay now I know that this underneath that ruler is two inches always 
I used to do it the other way, and I'll tell you, I would have pieces that were great, and then other pieces that aren't, and it gets very discouraging when you have to go back to the fabric store, and there isn't any more of that fabric left. <laughs> so, you know, I learned, I learned quick. All right, so you're going to make your cut, and then your last piece is a little triangle piece. You can cut that if you want, but it's a very small piece. I just use it as salvage and use it, uh, tuck it away somewhere else. So now I have, if you use a fat quarter, you should have like five strips. If you use small, you may only get four, and that's okay. Just do the same thing. Just, just make a, you know, a triangle with your piece there. Okay, so then what I do is I like to start mine with a um, the next largest one, and then I'm going to just stack them. Okay, and then I'll put my longer, my next shorter, and then my longer, and then I'm ready to go over to the machine and sew them together. So let's head over there. All right, and I'll be with you in just a second. Ta-da! There you go. I know my lawyers are happy now. <laughs> they got their ta-da. <laughs> okay, so now I've got my stack. And what I want to do is I'm going to take my very top layer off that, off that stack. And some people will tell you always make it to where your long edge is up on the top. And there's so many ways that you can do it. What I like to do is... Um, uh, I know, oh, hold on, piece has got to go like that. If I flip over my stack, all right, so in other words, okay, so let me show you on camera so that you guys can, can see here. Let me get this back the way it was. All right, so here's my stack, right? I'm taking my top one from my stack then I'm going to flip my stack over and then I'm just going to grab that next piece. This way my piece is staggered. Now this is a great way to do it if you don't have a pattern that you need to worry about. It has to go the right way. So like if you're using polka dots or like in this case all these different triangles go in different directions so you really don't know. You know what I mean? Um, if you're using something that has a pattern, like I have one over there that has like little paw prints on it, I wanted to make sure that it all goes the same way. So you'll just need to make sure that you get a piece that fits going the correct way. You know what I mean? So my point is down. My point right here is down. So I know that this piece needs to lay in a downward way. So I'm going to lay it on top. And then here, uh, let's see if you can see it. Hopefully you guys can. Here, let me pick it up. So I'm going to lay it so that my seams are together. And those little points at the end, that there's at least a quarter inch hanging off from the top and the bottom. See that little point there and that little point there. Approximately a quarter inch. Now you can mark it and you can, you can mark a quarter inch line here and Mark it, make sure that it's a quarter inch if you want. Um, what that's going to do is help this that I'm gonna once you sew it, that it lays out flat. So I'm going to put this in. I'm going to give myself a quarter inch seam. And I do know that on my presser foot, that, that little outer edge right there is a quarter inch. So now all I have to do is sew where that tip is to where the next piece of fabric. So it looks like a V. So I'm going to put, make sure my needle goes right through there, and I'm just going to go straight down, and then I should come out right at the V at the bottom. All right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those little corners right on the top off, and the one at the bottom. Some people wait until they open the seam to cut the other one. I don't. I don't really think it makes a difference. So now I've got a nice continuous piece. Okay. Now, if you have ones that pa the pattern matters, you want to make sure that when you fit it so that this piece goes to the top, I would need to make sure 
that um, let's see, yeah, this piece goes to the top that when I flipped it down that my patterns were all going in the same direction. Do you see what I'm saying? So you need to make sure that you're, you know, you're, you may not be able to flip it that way. Most of the fabrics that I do my bias with, though, I don't have to worry about pattern matchups on too many of them. So, and then you just piece them all together until it's all one big continuous strip. Fun, huh? So, add a quarter inch. You can use clips, you can use pins. And just have fun with it. I do want to thank you guys so much for all your prayers. Um, my son in law, he has, uh, they got his test results back. He is negative. Thank the Lord. Yay. <laughs> so, um, he's got an upper respiratory uh, infection so all right so this piece I know has got to go down because my point is down so I'm gonna put this latest piece here and then this piece uh, my next piece goes in a downward motion so it's just easier to match those pieces up that way because sometimes it can be confusing trying to figure out which way this is supposed to go <laughs> but yes, my daughter is totally relieved. Um, they put him on, they extended his, they've still got him in quarantine for the next 48 hours just to make sure that everything's good to go. Um, so essentially he's on quarters uh, and then he'll go back to work. When he's all done, so yay. But essentially, this is all I'm going to do all the way to the end. This piece goes up. Like I said, this one, because the pattern is, because the, the um, triangles are in so many different directions, it really doesn't make, it doesn't, it's not going to make that big of a difference. Um, but if you, if you do have a pattern one, you want to make sure that your pattern is all going the same direction when you fold it down. So how you can tell is, see how I laid that upward? If you just pull it down and look to make sure that your patterns are all going the same direction, then you'll know. If not, just grab another piece. They'll all match up, I promise. <laughs> when you get to the very end. It may not match up on that end. You may have to go back to the beginning and just add it to that beginning piece, but it'll work. Okay, so now where I did here, I allowed my, my presser foot to come in too far. So I'm going to have to, otherwise when I go to lay this out, it's not, it's going to be way off. So I need to re- put it under there and sew it so that I keep with my quarter inch seam. I didn't need to rip it out because it's just going right over the top of it anyways. It's too short. So see how that's nice and even? That's what you want. And you know, um, what you could do is take a bunch of strips if you have excess little squares you know that you I don't know you might have like a five or six inch square or even an eight inch square that you know you want to cut up make cut them into strips bias strips and then sew them all together if you have like multiple ones and then just have like different fabrics you could almost make uh like a almost like a snippet roll but it's like a bias roll you know with different types of fabric and that would be cool to make and give us a gift and the great thing about bias is that not only can you trim things, but you can use it in, in junk journals. You can sew it to the edge of a page. You can uh, put it on your cover. You can do all kinds of cool things with bias, bias tape. Okay, this one's going up. And I'm going to sew this one, and then I'm going to put you guys on hold. 
until um, I'm finished because I'm sure you guys don't want to sit here and watch me so little stress back and forth. As soon as I get the last strip sewn on. Okay, guys, so I'm on my last one, and I don't know if I did mention, so I do want to mention now make sure that your right sides are together when you do this because you don't want to sew it like that. <laughs> your right sides need to be together. Don't remember if I mentioned that or not, so I thought I'd let you guys know because I would be mad at me. To me, she didn't say so. <laughs> okay, so snip this last corner off of here. Alright. And then, now we've got this big old long piece here. And what we need to do is go back over and we need to iron it out and then get it all ironed and, and uh, folded. So head, head with me back over to the ironing board. All right. So now what I've got is my little handy tabletop ironing board and I've laid it flat. You can lay it up. I laid mine flat so that you guys could see a little more of it. If I raise it up, you guys can only see so much of it. So now what I want to do is... Um, I want to open up my seam. You can lay it flat if you prefer. I like to keep my seam open. It seems to lay better when I fold it, when I iron it and fold it. So we're going to want to open this seam up. If it wants to open for me, it's being stubborn. Come on. And then that little notch out of there. We're just going to go through and open all our seams. And hopefully not burn our fingers in the process. <laughs> now, if you get a piece that's a little off wonk like that, that's okay. It'll it'll fix itself when we go to fold it. All right, it won't be that big of a deal. You just want to try and keep most of your pieces straight. That's why, you know, doing that quarter inch seam it helps you. It keeps it a nice even strip. But it's okay if you get one or two that are off. It's not going to, your project isn't ruined. <laughs> I promise. This can sometimes be the tedious part is trying to get these little things open. So, well, goodness gracious. Come on. It's like, it's like opening an oyster, yeah? <laughs> Doesn't want to open. All right, so let me get the rest of these, these seams open and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've got all my seams opened up and ironed. Now, without a bias tape maker, normally what you would do is you would fold it in half and you would iron it all the way down to make a seam. Then you would open it back up and then you would fold in a quarter inch here and then, you know, iron it down. And then another quarter inch here and then iron it down. And then you would have your biased right at take I could tell you that takes a long time so the great thing about a bias tape maker is you put it in one end and then you just pull it and then you iron as you go but if you don't have one of those and since they're very hard to find I'm going to show you what my mother showed me a long time ago you're going to need a fairly long pin this one is A little over two and a half inches okay so uh, that's good because you're gonna need it longer than an inch and then 
I would suggest that you get one of these disappearing ink or mark be gone markers. You can mark it in pencil and erase it later, but on your ironing board, what you're going to want to do is iron, you're going to want to mark it somewhere on here um, where you want to. Uh, I'm going to do it not quite up at the top. I'm going to do it because what I'm doing is I'm pulling it through and then I'm ironing it because I iron with my right hand. Okay, so I want it to pull through somewhere in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark an inch off on here. You can use chalk, you can use whatever. Okay, just don't use per anything permanent because this is your ironing board, right? I mean, you can mark it there if you want to use it this way. Take your pin, pop it in, and then pull it up so that your your pin comes out right at that mark, and then push it through, and then put the pin end right at that one inch mark again, and push it down. Okay, so now you have like a little wire here. All right, so now we're going to take our bias tape, just to get it started. You're not going to do this all the way through, just to get it started. All right, I'm going to mark in half an inch on either side. Since we have two inch strips, just going to mark it there and there. And then I want to mark it up here a little bit so that I can make a fold. Okay. And then maybe down a little bit more. And then I'm just going to draw a line. doesn't have to be immaculately, mathematically perfect, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this up. I'm going to take my iron, and I'm just going to iron that first little tidbit, okay? That first little point. Then I'm going to slide that through underneath my um, wire here where my pin is, okay? And right before, I'm going to fold this down, my half inch mark, okay, and then I should be able to pull it through, and then because I've got my pin is holding it there at a one inch mark, it's going to keep it feeding through at, at one inch, okay. So now, I can iron as I go. So what I've been doing is just feeding it through. I got my top part started. I'm just going to feed it through gradually. Okay, get myself some length going here. All right, make sure you guys can see this. Hopefully you guys can see. Yep, you can see it. Okay, I can pull this back just a little bit. All right, and then I'm going to take two pins, and I'm going to pin the end here and here just so that I can, from the back side here, hold it and iron it, okay? Just, it doesn't have to be super duper tight. I'm just pulling it kind of a little taut, a little taut, and iron. And trust me, this is much quicker <laughs> than trying to do it half and then a quarter, or half and then a, and then a half again. So now, I know I've already got this portion ironed. I'm just going to feed it through. And the great thing about this is, if it goes too far, you can pull it back, readjust it, and just pull it through. Okay, and then I'm going to pin that end. actually quite fun <laughs> and then I'm going to do it one more time and then I'm going to put you guys on hold on um, pause you guys and do the rest so that I can get it through and then I'm going to show you guys what to do after that because you're going to have to do one more iron down it okay For 
somewhere. I think it's that right there. So I'm gonna. And if it gives you fiddlies, just stop and press. And see, this is that point. Remember when I told you if it's off a little bit, that's okay. It'll fold over. Just get your iron back on it again. And then in those those seams, I like to kind of put my iron over there for a couple, for a good second or two longer than normal where you're doing it everywhere else, just to make sure that they fold down okay. All right. And then I'm just going to pull again. somewhere here <laughs> I'm like showing you guys oh yeah yeah okay I went too fast that's what it was okay all right I'm just gonna pin and iron all right so let me get the rest of this finished and I'll be right back Okay, so I am almost at my end here, and I just want to show you guys what I do. So now I'm going to pull this down, almost the end here. I adjust if I need it to just about there. Okay, and then I'm going to pin my ends. Now, in here, you can readjust. I just kind of, there we go. All right. So now I'm down to my last bit. And then from here, I should just be able to run my iron right over the pin. And so that my end is done. Okay. Ta-da. Now I can pull my pin out. Now all we have to do is fold it in half. When we fold bias, we want to make sure that one end is just slightly, just slightly below the other. When we iron it, and the reason for that is to make sure that when we put it between something that um, we know that it'll pick it up and catch it on the back side of the stick on the machine. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this top part. Let me just iron it down real quick. Some people cut their ends off at this point. I don't cut mine off. Um, I don't cut them off until I'm ready to use them only because most of the time I make mine with cotton. You're going to get some fraying and I don't want it to fray any more than it needs to because this bit I'm going to cut off anyways. Can't use it on my um, project. So, all right. So I'm going to pin it. Let's see. Let's see if we can get it in the camera here. I'm going to pin it at the end down here. Okay. That's my folded end. And then all the way on the other end here. You can see. I am going to just pull it kind of tight. Not not too tight, just taunt. And I'm going to fold it up so that I've got that little um, edge sticking up. One side is shorter than the other, just slightly. And then I'm just going to iron it over. Make sure everything is tucked in. All right, all the way to the end. And then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to keep this end tight. And then over those little folds, um, the, the seams, I'm going to hold it just a little bit longer and then come to the end. Okay. Then when I'm done with this end, I'm going to unpin it from the top. I'm going to move it all the way to the end of the, the um, ironing board again and pin it. So as you can see, it's pinned up here. Okay. Um, I got to move my ironing board back and forth so you guys can see. And then I'm just going to pull it a little taut, fold it up, 
and do the same thing with the iron. Just be careful with your fingers. Go slow if you need to. Make sure everything's tucked in there. All the way to the other end. And then turn the iron. Pull it taunt again. And just make sure that it's ironed again. Okay, and then you do that all the way to the end. And then I'll show you how you can wrap it on a piece of cardboard or whatever um, to store. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now I am at my very end down here. I just want to make sure that you can cut that end off if you want. Totally up to you. I don't. I keep it. Like I said, it keeps my fabric from unraveling a little bit there. Okay, I just have that little edge there. That's longer than the other. Okay. So now we have a bunch of bias tape. And then what I do is I cut a piece of, this is file folder, you can use cereal box, cardboard, whatever, um, about two and a half by five inches. And then this is the typical size that you'll get in a, uh, you know, from the store when you buy bias tape anyway. So what I do is I just wrap it on here and then store it that way too um, until I'm ready to use it. So, which won't be too long anyway, but <laughs> so, um, and this is half inch, as you can see, this is, uh, here, let me show you guys, see if you guys can see, see how one side is a little longer than the other. It can be shorter than that if you like, but this is half inch bias from, from one edge to the other. It's half inch. You can do this in bigger you can do it in quarter inch. It's very hard to do when you start getting smaller and smaller to make those folds. So um, some people just with a quarter inch, they'll take um, a half inch and, and uh, or they'll take an inch and then they'll fold it in half and then sew it and then wrap it over the top and that'll give you about a quarter inch. So, but it's small stuff to have to work with that small. <laughs> oh, so what is bias tape? What, what else can you use with bias tape? So as a crafter, um, obviously you can use it for multiple things on sewing, you know, tie straps on like a little uh, tank top or um, hair bands, you know, you can, you can um, put a, you know, make a scrunchie out of it. You can, with junk journaling, I would say, well, I'm going to do a project, like I said, and show you guys how you can kind of make a kind of a snippet roll kind of thing out of it. Um, but you can also sew down this open edge and use it as a tie on your journals, like a tie off on your journals. So if you have some really pretty fabric that you want to use and you're, and you don't want to make it that thick, you just want a small closure. You can make bias tape to do that. Um, you could sew it on the edge of a page. On a tag, you could use this. Sew it and use it kind of like a ribbon. So you could literally tie it on the top of a, a tag. So there's all kinds of things you can use with bias. You know, you can use bias with bias, uh, bias tape for um, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> So, and then I am just going to put a pin in it to keep it from unraveling and then just stick it in my pile. And that's that. I mean, look, in well, 39 minutes, well, you figure probably in about 45 minutes because I had to stop the camera to finish doing that and then finish doing the ironing. 
you can have four and a half yards. So it's a nice little fun project to do. You share it with your friends, you know, wrap it up nice. You could just use plain um, cereal box and then cover it with decorative paper and, and give it like that as a little gift. I thought that would be fun. But um, like I said, I'm gonna, I've got some masks I've got to do up and um, I'm hoping that tomorrow I can, I've got some fabric in mind for the cover. So I want to put the, do the cover first. So, um, and then do a cute little project with the spine kind of thing. So we're using some bias tape. So I will be back. <laughs> um, thanks again, guys, for all of your prayers. Uh, they are much, much appreciated. Um, I love each and every one of you guys. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Um, and until next time, guys, plenty of hugs, loves, and blessings. Mwah. Be safe out there, guys, and craft on.